why in the morning today being entrepreneurship tuesday we are doing it differently we're going to talk about how to use technology in agriculture and it's really an interesting conversation we have a very powerful guest in studio who is actually going to give us deep insights about how that sector is so attractive it's amazing and if you're a millennial or a generation z or a gen z in other words you should be loving it because you know agriculture in, in some kind of way it has always been associated with people who are not literate but trust me it's it, it the most it's the most uh, amazing thing to do especially right now you know being organic uh, being climate change sensitive and at the same time trying to sensitize young people or young minds to actually follow that path because you uh, my guest actually before uh, before I introduce him we had a conversation where he was trying to share with me that you know you can still slay you can still do your nails you can still you know uh, be stylish and still go back to do your agriculture and come back and still continue with your same same amazing life and uh, he's right here in studio with us uh, good morning good morning Sako. thank you for joining us and in the morning my pleasure all right so uh, just a little bit intro of yourself, but uh, he is uh, Derek Ngigi. He's the managing director of Y Center and Shamba Solutions. And thank you so much. Uh, just a brief overview of how you got into Matas Agriculture. And then uh, here you are. Yes. So um, I got into agriculture very early in life because um, um, my, my parents, um, uh, you know, agriculture is the main source of income in this country. So back then, but um, growing up, I never really liked it. Actually, I used to pray, let me get out of it. So I went into university to do mechanical engineering, did several projects in industry, uh, in, in medical and also uh, energy sector. However, now I came back to ask myself uh, after exploring a lot of technology uh, in, in the country and outside the country, seeing that, wow, we can actually utilize technology to to change agriculture and agriculture how it's being done outside there it's not how we do it inside here so um, that is when I changed it up to um, to start doing the Morgan uh, the uh, encouraging the youth to do the modern agriculture all right. Now, uh, when it comes to sensitizing the youth into getting into agriculture, I know it can be really hard. Uh, what are some of the avenues or some of the, let's say, some of the means that you're using to entice them to actually embrace tech so that they can get into agriculture in a way that it's, it's not making them lose who they are? Because, you know, millennials just want to be in touch with what they want, not what, you know, other people want them to do, but especially now agriculture. So, um Looking at how agriculture has come to change, um, people can, the youth can actually get into it and still remain as stylish as they can be. They can actually have money in their pockets. Um, I'll give you an example of, let's say, hydro, uh, hydroponic farming. So hydroponic farming is soilless um, farming, and that actually means that um, you don't have to uh, become, you know, handle dirt and all that to actually produce you're producing using water in a very uh, clean way and then um, then we have uh, let's say vertical gardens and in the vertical gardens um, it's kind of you just compressing that garden into one vertical space and you're able to plant a lot of plants all together so again it takes a lot of uh, 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 lesser space and there, therefore less labor and then um, also looking into how uh, the technology has also changed before you know uh, there is a lot of in internet penetration and um, electricity penetration in rural areas so it doesn't mean that you being in the farm disconnects you out of the world so you have you all the time to do your TikTok and everything and embrace nature there but uh, doesn't stop you from coming here to town uh, you know you it can actually fund you to, um, to, to, to drive your life. See, um, it is where actually most of the employment opportunities are because the capital in agriculture is very little compared um, to the capital uh, starting in other uh, uh, kind of businesses. So it becomes a very um, green avenue for the youth. All right, I'm trying to actually check uh, a little bit of your description. It says, uh, you are in internationally recognized and you've won accolades including the coveted United Person of the Year Award in 2020 and then Kenya Head of State commenda Commendation Honours as well, making him a true leader in his field. So how did you first get here? And here you are talking about this. 
<laughs> so um, I really have a passion in innovation. And okay. that has been ever since I was a very young boy, I was into innovation. And then, um, so learning about foreign technology and all that, that was what I did uh, since day one I got into university. And then is when the COVID came in. So when COVID came in, we were like, okay, in a situation that we cannot import uh, ventilators and um, we cannot, uh, uh, you know, technology is very limited and we have to use the resources because no imports are again coming into the country. So again, we have to look at uh, how can we help our country. So we assembled a group of 15 students and we started now working on uh, the, the medical machine, the first African ventilator. Yeah. So that is what got me out. And that's why I asked myself, if we could make this machine completely foreign to us, we had to uh, take very long time listening to medics um, uh, 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 doing a lot of research. Why can't we replicate that in agriculture, which is a very common thing to us. We have grown in farms. We every day, you not, you know, we always have um, we, within that agriculture space. In fact, agriculture is the greatest contributor of our GDP. So exactly. why can't the we, backbone of our economy. Exactly. Yeah. So why can't I innovate? Why can't I bring um, change into this space, which I see a lot of potential in it? All right, interesting. And, and that has reminded me of, uh, of course, the president said they're importing fertilizers to ensure that farmers are farming, especially right now because it's a rainy season. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of that? Uh, do you feel like uh, the fertilizer is, is going to even aid more farmers in terms of boosting production, in terms of even uh, spreading awareness that, yes, we are just from this chaotic uh, electioneering period, the economy is bad. Is, 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 are we going to have a shift in terms of agriculture productivity? Definitely expect a shift. And um, however, that will also, uh, um, we need to change our culture a little bit uh, to see a very uh, 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 a positive um, change. And I would want also to congratulate the, the government, apart from giving the fertilizers, they did a very detailed research on the states of our soils in Kenya, a, a, a bit which was missed out by, 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 um, by Kenyans. We never got to understand that bit. In fact, today in Moranga County, Caro, in collaboration with another international company, they're releasing a report on the, st uh, the soil status in, yeah. um, in, in Moranga County. So uh, apart from getting these fertilizers, subsidized fertilizer, I would sensitize farmers to also do soil testing so that okay. they're able to understand this fertilizer that I've been given, how do mm. I apply it and at what stage? And how is it compatible to yeah, the I, kind of soil that I have? Yes, know? and are they compatible to the type of soil that I have? Okay. And, and, and given right now that there's, there's, there's no big, um, um, I mean, variation, they're given one type of fertilizer, it's now um, a question of how do I apply it to make sure that it is releasing the right quantities at the right time so yeah. that I can have a difference uh, rather than the traditional way of applying it just during right. planting and during weeding here. Yeah. Right. I'm also thinking in, in the place of like now organic manure, what is now the difference between, yes, you're importing this fertilizer, but it's not organic. Yes. It's, it's more of chemical, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is which now, which is going to boost uh, soil fertility? Because mm -hmm. in, this is, in this situation, you're talking about fertility yes. and boosting production. Yes. Which one should I go for as mm -hmm. a farmer? You know? Okay. So that's a very good question. Most farmers ask that. And one thing we have to understand, the soil is alive. The soil is a living component, uh, and right. a, a bit we miss uh, because um, we have to nurture our soil. Like just like we nurture our bodies, you you can't eat ugali from January to December, right? Right, sure. Uh, definitely, you'll have some complications. So uh, by understanding our soil, then you're able to know well these are the um, these are the, uh, the 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 composition of my soil. This is how I need to boost it. Then organic fertilizer, which we really really encourage farmers and also modern farmers to look into it. Um, uh, always, you know, organic fertilizer brings in a lot of microorganisms which assist the soil to become alive. Remember, excessive use of inorganic fertilizer results to the death of these microorganisms. And we depend on these microorganisms to convert actually the carbon uh, that the, 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 the plants have ab absorbed into um, the carbon, uh, some 
carbon components and store it in the soil. And then um, the same same organism assists to break down the nutrients so that the plant is able to absorb these nutrients. Right. So it's very, very key to test your soil. And by testing your soil, you're able to understand the ratios that I have to use for uh, inorganic or the chemical fertilizer because they have instant release. And then the ratios to combine it with uh, organic fertilizer, which gives a slow re release and also nurtures the organisms in the soil. All right, good. I'm also looking at it from a point of uh, a farmer or a somebody who's based in the interiors of, of the rural areas where they actually don't have this kind of information you're talking about here. Like, wow, ni, ni between March and uh, April, tunatarajia mvua, so siyo cha tuanza kupanda. But then it, it, it also turns out that uh, the, the soil fertility favors them. They wanna panda njugu, njugu zina mezi na kwa vizuri, maindi. Uh, uh, the produce is, is so amazing. Why is it important for them to maybe try and even understand even more? And especially when it comes to now incorporating the government, should should we have initiatives that should that should be exactly directed towards you know informing and 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 creating awareness uh, for people living in the rural areas? Do you think that is going to help, or maybe there's there's already existing initiatives that are already life changing as well? Welcome back. We apologize for that technical hitch, but we are still talking to uh, Derek Ngigi, who is the managing director at Y Center Shamba Solutions. And we are talking about how to use technology in agriculture, in other words, agri tech. And before we went off, you're trying to, uh, to tell me how you know, we can ensure that, you know, young, not even young, like generally people from the rural areas can have this information. But away from that now, the way agriculture is packaged, even in terms of advertising, even if you check out some of the flyers, you know, they always have a, a, a photo or maybe, a, a, say, a mugshot of somebody who is just, somebody looks hopeless. And then there's, there's this lady who gave a speech about how we can make agriculture attractive to young people. You know, how can we do that so that young people get to like, when you read the first impression of an agri-tech advert, you really fall in love with it. How can we make it more enticing? Um, if I could assemble five friends of mine in agriculture and we just sit down, trust me, you'd think we are fully in the corporate world. Actually, personally, I'm the only one who I'm part in the corporate world. And you would not tell a difference because they come in with very good cars. Uh, they are very, very stylish and they're actually farmers. I think it's the notion of how you have painted agriculture to the youth. If you do it seriously, it has a lot, a lot of money. And then the good thing about the youth, they have access to information. They can also, you see, if, you know, if something is going wrong in their farm, they can always quickly Google, ask around and get very correct information. So it, for them, um, and because agriculture nowadays is more about how much you're informed, it becomes very, very lucrative to them. Uh, my friends who did completed their bachelors, did their masters, but have never stepped in an office, they are fully into agriculture, doing very well. So um, I think people need to also see that side of agriculture. And I would encourage the, um, the youth in agriculture Watch Xema ni Mungu ni God and actually show people what they are doing because yeah. um, that would really help a lot of youth to embrace that side and also in, in, in improve our, our, our output as an agricultural country. All right, good. In terms of mentorship now, uh, let's get to it. Uh, for example, somebody who never wanted to you know, go back to their rural home, but they, like we said in the beginning, agriculture is the backbone of the country. How can they shift their mind and now start moving away from you know the modern day kind of lifestyle to now the organic way because uh, like we said millennials are really 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 you know not so easy to handle especially when it comes to things that involve their physique getting that in in any how can we push them more towards that side um we have had a lot of cases of depression mental um, um, mental, mental breakdown health, you know, and yeah. mental health issues. Yeah. And um, just coming from that perspective, and I would want somebody to just try it out. Go and spend, go back and spend just half of your day in a farm or around nature and see how much of an impact it would have. Okay? And um, that is the way we should perceive it. Um, it's not... We, we all need to agree that 
agriculture should not st uh, stop us from living the life we want to live. It should not stop us, you know, just like an eight to five job. Actually, most of the agriculture work is done before 11, you're done with all, and you, you have a lot of free time. You have time to go out to your friends, focus on what you want. You need to know, to understand, I, I want to do farming, this type of farming. This is my expected kind of output. Do research on it, put your energy into it, and at the end of the season, you start seeing the money. And um, it's very, very encouraging. I, we, 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 there's one youth who started with one vertical garden, and in this vertical garden, he was able to do 100 kills. And uh, by the end of the, the, the sixth week, he had started selling out. And he bought another vertical garden. And um, uh, by the end of six months, he had six vertical garden. And they were paying out his rent and all that. And he continued the multiplying uh, the, the gardens. Now he has about 200 gardens. It gives him a decent salary per month of about 100, 120. And he's living the life he wants in just a, a, about three years. So um, it is us see, being positive about it, knowing the end goal, knowing that you need to put in the energy. And in a very short time, after you have understood the ropes and everything, you become a, a master in it and start giving you great income. Right. Before we talk about uh, agricultural, um, let's say climate friendly uh, crops, uh, in, in terms of the government uh, spearheading for such initiatives, what do you think uh, for, for the youth to actually plug in in such initiatives, what should be proposed on the table for that to be accepted? So one thing is the policies. The policies need to favor uh, uh, the, the young farmers. And we are seeing this with the government uh, introducing subsidies, especially in the agriculture industry. Okay. The second thing is people and the youth who have been actually in agriculture. And yeah. I really love what um, uh, the government of Moranga is doing um, under the leadership of um, the First Lady, Shalene Ruto, and also the Deputy Governor, Stephen Monania. They are bringing out that good story of the youth in agriculture. Nice. Especially in coffee, uh, showing that they are actually the youth who are run who run in coffee, different sectors of agriculture. We have the farmers who actually farm. We have the team who do branding. We have the team who do which do value addition. You know, it's not even only about the the farm. We have right. different sectors, but right. in the same same agriculture. So yeah. we have very good marketers. We have uh, ladies who do very good TikTok, and now. What they are selling is the agriculture and the coffee outside there. So you see, it's an avenue for them, still in agriculture, doing what you love to do, but now specializing in agriculture. All right, now let's talk about crop, crop, um, um, uh, climate friendly crops. Uh, of course, uh, climate change, uh, global warming, issues of global warming are there. And I think yesterday is when the president actually uh, gave out a directive to ensure that some of the policies that should be made, they should be made towards steering towards uh, the issues at hand that includes global warming and climate change. Now, in terms of sensitizing farmers to us, that how can they aid in combating that issue of global warming and climate change? Mm. Apart, um, going again uh, uh, in contract to what we have been made to believe about um, uh, the carbon capture, the soil is the biggest organ in terms of carbon capture. Right. So what does that mean? That farmers have the greatest role to play in reducing the carbon the, uh, and the global warming effect. And um, a study was shown when we actually remove uh, during the tillage period, that right. is when we have the most carbon in uh, the atmosphere. When we have the green crop, uh, the, the, the fasted leaf and all that, uh, the carbon con uh, starts at least reducing. Okay, right. So this means that whenever we have, f um, uh, we, we, we have plants in the farm, carbon is, a lot of carbon is being captured and it's consumed, uh, it's, it's consumed by the plants and then uh, goes down to the roots where it's stored. Yeah. So, what am I tr trying to say? The farmers need to practice what we are now calling a regenerative agriculture, looking mm -hmm. into inter uh, intercropping, crop rotation, ensuring that you don't do a uh, complete tillage um, in terms of leaving out the soil completely bare, how you right. prepare your land to ensure that uh, soil erosion is well taken care of. 
that right. is a way farmers can assist in uh, the role of in reducing the uh, the the, the uh, climate, climate change climate and global change. warming. Yes. Right. Uh, right now we are experiencing a lot of floods, and uh, like you you mentioned, soil erosion. There's those areas that are really extreme, and uh, you you realize when it floods, like manure or the the fa the most fertile parts of the soil are oh, no. carried away. Yeah. How can they be helped to ensure that once the rain, literally, should we like continue? And, and, and go ahead and just farm um, are there means that we can do. And I know gabions really help a lot. What other means can be used to actually aid that, um, especially the, now? There is a project which just ended. Yeah, it's called Narig. Uh -huh. uh, it was in several counties. And I really loved the work they did in terms of soil erosion. And uh, you find that most of the fertile lands are really slopey. Right. Okay? And uh, what they were encouraging... Even the landscape in Moranga yeah, is really slopey, yeah. Not even, look at all the highlands areas, that land is highly sloppy. Right. And because we keep on you know, farming uh, and then it rains, soil erosion takes place. Right. However, the NARIC program, uh, pro program was um, uh, training farmers on how they can actually counter like, that. Counter that. Uh -huh. uh, you, you, you dig gabions so that um, uh, you're able to channel the water very well and you don't like completely throw this water. You're channeling it to ponds that they have uh, actually dug and built and they're mm -hmm. able to capture that water. So such programs which have been initiated by the government, again which I say the public-private partnership in this sector, has, in agricultural sector, has really helped to improve uh, how the farmers are dealing with issues such as soil erosion and the like. All right. As we near towards the tail end of this conversation, one thing that uh, has popped up in my mind regarding that is a water retention and, and, and uh, water harvesting. Of course, we have been through a very extreme dry period. And it, it, it's been spell dry. Mm. And then now it's raining and it's flooding at the same time. But then it, it will reach at a time when there'll be no more water. Yeah. So uh, what can farmers do to ensure that they, they practice uh, water retention and then water harvesting, which I know uh, is among a big role that can help you know, farmers to be consistent in their practice? So, um it's very good uh, that we get this concept of planning in agriculture. Right. And by what I mean planning in agriculture, you knowing that we are going to have the dry seasons, we are going to, be have, uh, we're going to have the, 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 the dry seasons. So um, water harvesting then becomes very, very key. Investing in technologies as, uh, such as um, solar pumps instead of diesel uh, pumps to, to, to ensure that even during the dry season, you can sustainably irrigate your, your plants using the, uh, the, 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 the solar pumps. So um, planning becomes very critical. Um, in a f we advise farmers to plan how you'll harvest the run of water because that water can again be used in agriculture. If you have uh, places where you can actually store create micro dams within your own area, then again, that becomes very, very important. All right. And, and, and I think for anyone who's watching and, uh, you know, agriculture to them was like, yeah, you know, I'm sure by now it's, it's becoming something that's easy to love. I remember there's a friend of mine who has, like, he believes in organic, in organic stuff and there's a place he has uh, ame panda maindi kuna place ingine ame kamiwa but see it is kwa shamba ame, all these are in pots do you feel like that's that's going to be the future trend in agriculture where si lazima wende you know shago unaweza unaweza panda njugu zako kwa nyumba na ziko kwa bedroom hadi you would keep on watering them anyways yeah, I, and i like that i like that i wish you could see my balcony and my neighbor's balcony uh -huh. it's a whole farm uh -huh. you enter in all yeah. crops in yes. there. Yes, yes, yes. So right. that you, you, you know, it, it informs you that how with sustainable farming and smart farming, you can actually do what we call crop intensification and okay. get a lot of produce, things you have own grown. I don't go to buy Sukuma Wiki, I get from my own balcony. Right. How big is it? Like, how many pots do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine if you can ask me because of my panda on balcony. Okay, after how, how, after how long do you consume skuma wikis? Maybe two, two to three days. Okay. You have like 10 crops. Uh -huh. Within those two to three days, they would have already. And again, you're not like plucking all the leaves all together. Oh. You see? This means they are healthy. Yes, they are very you've healthy. Ma you've manured them, you've it, watered them. You, you ground your coffee. All right. Okay? Yeah. Instead of oh, buying... Instead of drawing shop. away the grounds of the coffee, that's All a very right. good manure you can always apply there. Yeah. You see? 
So uh -huh. um, instead of throwing away some of the decomposing, like, you know, you can just put in the pots. Yeah. Very, very nice. You know, you, you you see your own crops grow and you enjoy a very uh, um, uh, a healthy lifestyle. All right. As we finish up, before uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've just discovered that you are also an engineer. Like that is now what you studied for. And uh, you studied engineering and you've mentored young people in a, in a number up to up to a total of 200 in robotics and automation. Wow. How, how did you how did you uh, put that aside? And then here you are into robotics because I'm trying to see <laughs> engineering and uh, agriculture and now automation and robotics as we close up. They are not, they are not apart. They are part of each other. Okay. Again, on the balcony, you don't do irrigation. It's automated. All right. Depending on the, uh, on the moisture content in the pots, All right. the, the, the system will actually activate. Because sometimes they go away up to a week. Okay. who will do the irrigation. It's all automated on it. That's yeah. why I, I had to bring in this concept to the youth. These things we do, uh, robotics, how can we apply them in our own context? Our, right. our context is agriculture. So right. robotics, automation, let us do it in our farms. Let us do it in our Joakali industry. Let all us right. use the tools that we learned in the university, not to be inside the book somewhere in uh, back of the head hidden, right. but applying it to the situations that we are in. Right. Yes. Because most of us have just book information instead of practical information in the situation on ground. Now, as you find it, your final point, uh, what is your punchline on the beauty about agriculture that you tell if you were to speak in a TED talk <laughs> and give a talk about the beauty of agriculture, especially in Kenya? What would be your punchline in that TED talk? So my punchline would be. Oh, that's tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's interesting. That's your camera. <laughs> okay, so my punchline to all the youth, and this is a call out to all the youth, that there is a modern agriculture and we need to embrace it. And agriculture is not about the farm. Agriculture has a lot of sectors and you need to see the niche that you're in and find love in it and passion because agriculture drives our country. Let us be part of what drives our country. Thank you. All right. I think I'd love to watch that TED talk because <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lady who gave uh, uh, an interesting philosophy about how agriculture should be marketed so that it becomes beautiful as well. When you look at the most attractive uh, products, they, they have very interesting faces, like the personality of the branding is so striking. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love the fact that you should be part of that so that we can help agriculture become a marketable and attractive thing in our country. Where, uh, do you do consultations? Yes. You do consultations, yeah, so you, you can so give out your contacts so people can access you? Yeah, we, we at, at uh, West Center Shamba Solutions, we focus on soil testing and guiding the farmer um, from the beginning or to the end. You can visit our website at ysentersl.com. Uh, you can also uh, maybe call me in my number 0790-566-616. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming through. My pleasure. Right, you're welcome. We have been speaking to Derek Ngigi, who is a managing director at Y Center Samba, Shamba, Samba, Shamba, Shamba Solutions, <laughs> talking to us about how to incorporate tech in agriculture. And definitely, if you hated agriculture by now, you are loving it to each and every inch of it. And by, by the way, agriculture is the most, is, is our backbone of our country. And it's not the ugliest thing like we, we have, you know, especially Generation Z, Zatutaki, Kwenda, Kulima. But he has put it very clearly. You can still do your TikTok and come back and do your nails. So do that. And I love it. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take a very short break. Uh, Stephanie Yant is going to be coming up next, including Kalami Val, with interesting segments right there. But you can find us at Y254 channel. Mines is at Brian Sokoan1. And you can also keep it on the hashtag Y in the morning. See you in just a bit. <laughs>